Hello everybody, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. Today we're gonna to be creating this 3D card and it's gonna be using a 3D embossing folder as well as using this new December etched magnolia blossom die. There are several layers of petals as well as some curved edges here where the flower curls. So we're gonna be putting together some pretty realistic flowers. I love my magnolia bush outside. It's going to be a tree one day because <laughs> they grow pretty fast. Mine are white with some deep red hues in the center. So I'm going to try to imitate that. What we're going to do first is ink blend these petals here. I've die cut all of the pieces in white. Now I die cut them in white because I wanted them to stay a white and crisp color at the edges. You could always make your magnolia blooms any color you want. We know there are some really pretty deep pink magnolias out there. So anyway, I am ink blending first here with rosy cheeks and I'm just ink blending the centers a little bit. And these little tiny pieces that I'm ink blending now are the areas where the petals curl. So I'm coloring the outer edges of these petals. These two little pieces will adhere to that larger bloom. So that makes up the base or bottom layer of our blossom. So on the second layer, I'm using teeny bikini ink. It's a little bit brighter, a little bit bolder, and a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna ink blend the centers of these center petals. And that'll just give it a little bit more pop of color. And once I'm done ink blending both of these pieces, we'll work on the stamen and the flower centers, which I'm gonna color with a Copic marker. I'm using really soft hues today. I wanted it to be more realistic. And so I am using a chartreuse color almost because it kind of is greenish with a little bit of yellow in the flower centers. So I've used YG11 and then I'm going in with a darker color using YG17. So I'll blend that out with the stamen here and then I'm gonna work on two more blooms off to the side. Just didn't wanna take up all the time showing you the ink blending process of all of it because it's fairly straightforward. Now to give my magnolia blossoms some veins, I'm gonna be using a colored pencil. It'll just give us more fine strokes and lines in the petals of these blooms. This is a Polychromos colored pencil and I'm using the color Pink Carmine in case you're interested, but any red or deep pink will do. So I'm just adding veins on all of the petals here. Even on that outer edge, you wanna add a few little flicks just to make it a little bit more realistic and to kind of make your blossom a little bit more cohesive. I'm gonna attach these curled ends here onto the magnolia blossoms and not gonna lie, I saw a mock-up so I knew exactly where these pieces would go. So I hope this video is helpful for you if you're interested in these awesome dyes and it's just nice to be able to see it be put together. Anyway, the second curled piece is gonna go on this lower bottom left petal and then we are done with that base layer. You see how that curls up? And if you were to use a bit more contrast in colors, it'll show up even better. And really this doesn't do it any justice to see it on camera because in real life, you can really see the dimensions and everything a lot better. Moving on to the second layer of these flowers, we have those two smaller petal pieces. I'm just gonna adhere them right in the center. Again, I saw a mock-up, so I knew exactly where they should be positioned. I am just adding a dab of glue in the center because I want to create more dimension with my fingers later on and be able to curl up these petals, so I'm not gonna add too much adhesive. I did flare up the stamen just a tad with my fingers before adhering down the centers. And then for this center cone, I'm going to add that to my blossom using some foam adhesive to give it more dimension. So now that we have our pretty magnolia blossom put together, I'm just gonna use my fingers and kind of pinch and flare up those petals to give them a little bit more shape and a little bit more curl. And that'll give a nice 3D effect on our card at the end. All right, so as I said earlier, I am making two more on the side. I'm gonna pull them into view here and again, curl up all of those petals on the other two just to give them more life and a little bit more flair. I have the Magnolia Branches 3D embossing folder here. I thought it was pretty appropriate to combine these products for my card today. I'm just gonna run it through my die cutting machine to get this beautiful embossed look. And while you can keep it white, I wanted to add a little bit more color. Since my Magnolia Blossoms are white, 
and I just didn't, didn't want too much white on my card today. So I am using some Copic markers and I'm not gonna overcomplicate the coloring on this. I'm just adding a few flicks of color on each of the flower petals on the branches and on the leaves. So on the magnolia blooms of this 3D embossed image, I'm using R11 and I am just flicking out from where those crevices are. And because this is 3D embossed, you can kind of tell where the shadows are. So the work is kind of done for you there. And then I'll add some brown to the branches and I'm focusing on the lower side of all of the branches when I'm looking at my project. When I'm done with these branches, I'll go ahead and flick some color onto those leaves as well. Again, super simple, no need to complicate it. And when I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and trim this panel. I want a nice crisp edge so that I can also mat it on another panel later, just to give this card a bit of a frame. All right, so I have my three magnolia blooms here, or blossoms. I'm gonna quickly lay them out before I decide to adhere them to that panel. I'm gonna pop up that top flower and the bottom flower. That way I can kind of layer these pieces and overlap some of the petals on that second flower. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some liquid glue on that and then add some foam tape on that third flower and then everything will be in place. For the sentiment, we're gonna keep it simple and go with my favorite, a pre-printed sentiment strip. This one is from the Reverse Family set. So I've trimmed it down and I've hidden the white core of the paper by running a black Copic marker all the way around the edges. I'm just gonna add a double layer of foam adhesive just on the edge and add liquid adhesive on the rest just so it can catch a petal and adhere itself and everything will stay sturdy and in place. I have a cream piece of cardstock here that I'm gonna use as a matting panel. And once that's attached, we can go ahead and attach this whole entire card to a card base. So I'm using Dot Tape Runner and I've adhered these two layers together to create my card. And you can stop here, but I'm gonna add a few sequins to finish it off. I'm using my favorite iridescent sequins here. These are the Trinity Stamps Soapy Bubbles. There are four sizes of these little sequins, so they are really versatile for me. And that finishes my card for today. I hope you like this project. I always have so much fun creating 3D layered flowers. So I was thrilled to be able to share this project with you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye everyone.